I think I want to start with this is just Monty Williams rotations. And this isn't a new kind of topic amongst Pistons fans. Obviously, Monty's uh, commitment to continue playing bench lineups uh, has been, you know, a source of frustration for everyone. Uh, you know, you even see the Pistons beat reporters now tweeting out throughout the game, like, bench lineup in, because it's become such a topic that it's like everyone that kind of, everyone that has something to do with the Pistons on a day-to-day basis and, it, you know, is a fan that, you know, consumes Pistons content on a day-to-day basis. Like, everyone is in tune with how, you know, crazy and ludicrous it is that Monty keeps playing these all bench lineups. But I think the thing that kind of just doesn't make sense to me is like my whole thing with the all bench lineup is like it's not the fact that you you're not staggering and having you know K dot Ivy out there at all times or it's it's not that you're not having Isaiah Shield or Jalen Duran always on the floor playing in the center position. But to me like if this team was better and had like a you know a bench lineup that made sense to put on the floor then I would be okay with it. Like, but the bench lineup Monty continues to put out just makes no sense to me. Like, you don't have a point guard. So, like, tonight, and this has been the case for the past few games, especially while Marcus Sasser has been out, uh, basically the, the bench lineup consists of Malachi Flynn, Evan Fournier at the two, Quinton Grimes at the three, Fontecchio at the four, and James Wiseman at the five. Now, there's... A number of issues here, first of which is you don't have a true point guard. Malachi Flynn is not a point guard. He's got some skill as a creator, but it's kind of clear and obvious why he's like a fringe NBA player at the point guard position because he's, in my mind, he's a score first two guard. He's just too small, and that's why he struggles to stay on the floor because you can only really play him at the one, but he's not really a playmaker. So, you know, you're playing him at the point guard. He's a distributor who's not, from what I've seen, naturally a distributor at all. Then Simone Fontecchio and Quinton Grimes, particularly Grimes, are three and D wings. They're not, you know, Grimes isn't going to give you a lot off the bounce. We've seen that so far. He can do a little bit off a pump fake, but he needs to be playing off someone like Ivy and K that create advantages. So there's issue number two. Fontecchio, excellent kind of tertiary guy. You know, he can play, you know, if you're going to put him in the starting group, he can be your third scoring option on this Pistons team, not maybe on a final team, but, you know, he can do a little bit off the bounce, create a little bit on drives. He's kind of strong and that's been an area I've been kind of impressed with. But, you know, when you're playing him off of, I guess, Malachi Flynn and Quentin Grimes, like it's just inevitably Fonteki is going to be asked to do way too much. And tonight he probably had his worst game as a Piston. He was two of eight from the field had three turnovers, two of which were kind of really bad in the second half. Um, yeah, just never really got it going. He played 25 minutes, but all of them in the first half, a lot of them it felt like with this all bench lineup. So that's your third issue. Fourth issue, Evan Fournier. You know, he plays 15 minutes tonight, 0 of 2 from the field, 0 of 1 from 3. Like 15 minutes is going to that guy. Like Evan Fournier, like... You know, he's had a couple of moments with the Pistons where he's hit it, drained a few threes against the Knicks, and there was another game. He's, he's only played, like, five games. But for the most part, like, if he's not hitting threes or shooting threes, like, man, it, in my opinion, it's tough to justify him being out there, you know, because he doesn't give you anything defensively. He just he doesn't, and teams attack him. So there's your fourth issue. And then your fifth issue, James Wiseman, like, God bless him, has all the physical tools in the world. But, like, you know, he just, for some reason, just cannot put it all together. He'll have one decent game, but he'll just, so many moments where he just can't, you know, haul in, haul in the rebound. or Like, he, he had a couple of nice offensive rebounds tonight, but just when you have Isaiah Stewart and Jalen Duran, you shouldn't need to play Wiseman at the backup five. Like, I think we've seen enough. We've seen enough to know what he kind of is. And if he's struggling on the worst team in the league, one of the worst teams in NBA history, like I just, I don't get it. Like tonight, there was a moment where he played, he was on the floor with Cade and Cade was running a pick and roll. 
and Wiseman set the screen and like drifted out to the three point line and Cade had to yell at him, had to yell, roll, roll. And then Wiseman kind of runs towards the rim and posts up under the basket and then Cade ends up settling for like a pull up midi. And it's just like, to me, like, yeah, like Isaiah Stewart pops when he sets the screen for Cade. Jalen Duran always rolls. Like, James Wiseman should be rolling to the basket. For some reason, he just naturally he doesn't roll to the rim. Or if he does, he's slow to and seals his man and posts up and it just clogs up the paint. And especially with Cade, like, you need to open the paint up for him to attack because he's not Russell Westbrook. He's not Derrick Rose. He doesn't have that burst. He needs space to make things happen. And, you know, you can provide space when you roll to the rim effectively because it draws the defender and it collapses the defense. But, like, when you're not rolling to the rim, you're just standing there. It's just and getting in the way. It's frustrating. But, you know, that you're playing those five together. Like, they just don't even make sense together. And then you're putting them out there, and it's no wonder, you know, come the – like, I think that bench unit, the Pistons – I believe that old bench unit was fully in towards the end of the first quarter and the score was like 27 to 22. I'm pretty sure like the Cavs went on like a 14 to 2 run and were up by like 20 points by the time the Pistons started, came back in the second quarter and then Darius Garland just hit like five threes in a row and the Pistons are down 30. And it was just, you know, like I just, how much more data do you need in like, forget the data we know Monty's not the biggest analytics guy but like how much more do you need to see like the Cavs didn't even have Donovan Mitchell tonight and they're still an awesome team I think they're you know they could finish set with the second seed in the east like but it's just self-sabotage like you're just spotting teams like like it's no wonder the Pistons scored two points to the Cavs 16 or something in that first quarter and second quarter stretch with the old bench because they just like I went through player by player, no one can create in that group effectively. Not only can they not create for themselves really, but they can't create for others. There's no playmakers. You're just throwing out five guys and offense look horrible. It was a bit, a lot of Fontecchio just forcing stuff and it doesn't help anyone. So, um, and then like, I mean, you're starting born on shooter, still around Cade. Um, which, yeah, it's just, it's tough. It's really tough. And then, you know, I think it's worth, I guess we have to give Monty credit because in the second half, he actually staggered Cade and Ivy and we didn't see Malachi Flynn. So he had Cade and Ivy on the floor the whole time in the second half. And he also, I don't think Wiseman, Wiseman might have played like two minutes because Duran got into really, he got a fifth foul in the, third quarter so I think Wiseman was on for a little bit but then Stu took all the backup five minutes in the fourth quarter and that's when the Pistons made their run and it's just um like oh it's just so frustrating why like, how has it taken so long to like you know Stu should just be the backup five <laughs> it, it, it's so frustrating because he looks so good at the five position especially when he's going against um you know, smaller starting fives or starting fives that aren't like Nikola Jokic or something. But when he's against backups, like he just dominates. But until the Pistons game on Sunday, I think they're playing the Magic again. Um, less than any breaking news, we'll be back. But till then, go Pistons. Mm-hmm.